job to attempt the sound. See where it gets started. First, of course, it starts with the time when the women gather the spices and things which need to be used for the proper burial of the dead body. And they go to the tomb. It's empty. They're told that the Lord is risen from the dead by right? the angels that are there. And of course, they go back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. And of course, the immediate reaction was, oh yeah, of course, a bunch of hysterical women with their illusion of angels. This is not possible. That's going to be the first reaction. They really don't believe it. Because it's not something that happens in real life. Well, of course, the word gets about, but it's like all talk. And then the two disciples decide to go back home to Emmaus, and they meet the stranger on the road. It's the continuation of that chapter. And the stranger says, well, what's happening? And they say, well, this is the rumor that's going about. He says, well, now, you know, the scripture has something to say about this. And they invite this stranger to be with them for an evening meal, and he breaks the bread, they recognize him. And they have to go back to Jerusalem to say, yes, he really is risen from the dead. We talked to him, he broke the bread, and we recognized him. But it's still, in Jerusalem, it's still just a rumor. Then we get the Gospel account this morning. The, the disciples of, from Emmaus have, have returned and they told. And then Jesus appears in the room. And they are dumbfounded. They're amazed because there he is. And he says, I'm not a ghost. Take a look. Here are the wounds. They're still here. I'm a, the flesh is up. You have something to eat? They've had their evening meal. And they give him a piece of royal fish and he eats. And, and there he is. The real Jesus eating fish. They didn't eat. And he says, Well, maybe it's time for us to have some Bible study. And let's take a look at what the scriptures have to say about me. So we put things into very real terms, living terms, the reality of here I am, wounds still appear, and I am eating fish in front of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms all have something to say about me. The scriptures of old speak of me. And here I am. Things are new. Things have changed. And your witnesses is not just rumor and talk and delusions of angels and hallucinations. I'm real, and here I am. And you know me. And you're going to be witnesses to this. And it's going to start right here in Jerusalem. And you're going to spread the news. Witness of sin and the change that has taken place without the Father's relationship with the world and everything in it. Your witness. There he is, standing right in front of you. Can't deny that. Well, the disciples go out and they start with that witness. They're telling about the change that has taken place. And that leads us to the account from the Acts to the Apostles. So we're going to have to back up with that one as well. Who is this person that's now walking? Well, Peter, James, and John have gone to the temple to pray. 
And this fellow, paralyzed, is brought to the temple every day on his stretcher or some sort of thing to, to beg, to, to hand out for all. And here James and John come by and they see him and the hand comes out to get the all. And Peter says, well, silver and gold have I, I have nothing in my discretionary funds, but I know what I can do. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, he would get up and walk. And he gets up off of this pallet, off of this stretcher that carries him to the temple every day to day. He gets up. And that's that wonderful line in the book of the wonderful gospel gentleman. He was walking and leaping and praising God. Going into the temple. Peter had witnessed to him the healing grace of Jesus. Told him to get up in the name of Jesus. And he gets up and off he goes to Peter takes the down to the temple. It was the witness, you see, of what Jesus had accomplished, rising from the dead. But of course, that's been pretty controversy in the community. And people would say, wait, what's going on here? Peter said, this is what happened. You, the, the Lord's Messiah was betrayed and condemned and crucified you, this, you, you let a murderer go free and you put the innocent on the cross. But he rose from the dead. And that changes things. That means that the sins can be forgiven and new things can occur. And we are witnesses of that. Where is the witness? And you can see it happen. The fellow that has been there all these years, begging, hand out, never able to, to get up on his own two feet, leaping and running and praising God. <coughs> Jesus has done for him. That's what it's all about. And the fact that you and I are here today as members of the body of Christ and inherited the kingdom of heaven is because someone witnessed to us and told us the wonderful, glorious grace of Jesus. Our sins are forgiven and we can be new and faithful. But Jesus said to them, his disciples, you will be witnesses. That's our job. To be the witnesses to Jesus. To what he's done for us. Explain that to the world. Real Jesus. Done these things for us. To do it for us. He's fish in front of them, and he has a Bible study with them, and he says, all right, now, go out, do these things. They did. We will. <laughs>